Good afternoon from Rove Park, Cardiff, which will be the venue of the 57th Baseball International between Wales and England for the Gladstone Rose Bowl Trophy. Wales lead by 40 victories to England's 15, with one game abandoned in a series that began way back in 1908 at the Harlequins ground in Newport Road, Cardiff. England are very much the underdogs here today, and the Welsh victory by an innings at Liverpool last season was their seventh in the last eight years. Wales make free changes from the side that won last year, with number eight Mike Fleming of Kyra Ely making his debut at the age of 32. Captain Steve Haynes is the mo most experienced player and wins his tenth cap today. The side contains six Glamorgan and five Gwent players. England also make free changes from last year, but this, their side looks a bit long in the tough, with seven of the side having played in the 1960s. The Breck side Liverpool club supplies five players, including new caps Carl Hughes and Stephen Henney, and their most capped player is Bobby Davin, who wins his 18th cap today. Wales certainly start as a hot favourites with John Smith and backstop Ivor Hughes, as usual their trump cards, but England having Geoffrey Lynch, the bowler, who sensationally dismissed Wales for 12 in 1979. Wales opening the batting. The referee today is Tony Jenkins of Newport, who made his who makes his international debut. Tony in his fifth season, and he appeared in the 1981 Brewers final. The first Welsh batsman, Alan Harrison from Newport, and he'll face the bowling of Geoffrey Lynch, the very fine Englishman from Anfield Old Boys. Lynch, quite a tall man, preparing to bowl the first ball, wearing the number 10 jersey. Alan Harrison receiving, and the first ball was a good ball, in fact. It was straight down the middle, straight down the pegs, and uh, Alan Harrison let that one go, but uh, of course, two goods, and you're out. Bad ball this time, lower than his knee. bad ball and the first run of the game was an extra two bads make one extra so Wales with one run on the board Harrison putting it away safely enough and making two base two runs to Alan Harrison to open the account for the first batsman of the innings Wales 3 for naught. John Smith needing 11 runs to become the second highest ever Welsh scorer. Strikes it away. He won't get his 11 runs. He's caught by the captain, John Halliday. Very good sculpt for England. John Halliday, the captain. John Smith out. And certainly one of the finest Welsh batsmen of the last few years. Well, that's a, a shot from John straight to free base and a very easy catch for the England captain John Halliday and the next Welsh batsman Alan Bright the left-hander from Newport who hasn't scored in fact in his last three innings for Wales so a big shout from the Newport contingent if he does get away this time Alan hits it well enough he's got the run he wanted but he won a little bit more than that throw from the deep to Bobby Davin Two runs to Alan Bright. Tony Jenkins of Newport. Seen for the second time on television. Murphy punches it quite nicely. Through the field, but a misfield in. A lot of English cover there, though. And the fielder is the tall boy, Stephen Henney, in his debut. Two more runs, though, to the Welsh batsman, to Tony Murphy. Wales recovering after losing John Smith early on. Richards facing Lynch, tapping it in the style that John Roberts used to play for Grange Albion, still does in fact. And Richards trots around quite easily to two base. Playing very sensible baseball this season, Martin Richards. <coughs> Fleming has a good look around, takes his first ball in international baseball. And it's a good ball. Beautiful ball by Lynch. 
Well, that certainly wasn't the first ball that Fleming would like to have received. Will the second be good? It's not bad, it's good enough. I fought for one moment, he'd gone, he has gone in fact. Bobby Davin on one base. Now it looked as if he might have been struck out for a moment. It wasn't a good ball. And poor Mike Fleming, who received the good ball early on, really made a bit of a mess of that one. And Royce's throw to first base beat him, and Bobby Davin was there to base him out. 14 for two. Still a useful start by England. David Richards from Kyra follows his brother Martin. The first really big hit of the game. Richards can fly around. Here comes Freddie Price, the left-hander, after it. Richards is flying on his way to free. He may be cheeky enough for four, but no. The caller said free, and free it was for David Richards. Good start for him. Very good all-rounder. Paul Gardner receiving. And edging quite nicely. He plays that shot quite well. I think he's got it away to the Brook at Road Park. No, it comes back seemingly off a tree. Gardner, not a fast mover, but he gets a very good free as the throw comes back to Neil Rice, the backstop. Three runs to Paul Gardner. Wales first innings, 20 for two. Alan Harrison receiving and hitting. Not quite where he wanted to. Halliday with a throw. Davin can't take it. It wasn't a good throw. Harrison is off and the English field is there but Harrison makes it away to free base a little bit of untidy fielding that time by John Halliday the captain and Alan Harrison took it full advantage three runs to him Welsh score moving along quite nicely now it's big chap Lynch getting into the box and in his stride that was a good Haynes took it well enough to the outfield the tall fielder Stephen Henney but Haynes picks up two more runs great accumulator of runs especially in international baseball <laughs> Ivor Hughes who also started the same as Haynes on 83 starting the game 17 runs short of his 100 how many people make the 100 in international baseball Here's another cool customer from Van Rumney, Hughes. Very good ball, and it judged, in fact, to be a good as Hughes had to jump off the pegs. Very useful, almost unplayable ball. Another good ball, Hughes hits it high. Is this a catch? Halliday comes for it from one. Oh, he missed it! Never looked like taking it, in fact. Uh, his feet seemed to go away from him, and he lost it somewhere. Well... I'm afraid that's the sort of catch you've got to take against people like Ivor Hughes, Steve Haynes, John Smith. Catches certainly win matches at baseball and John Halliday knows he should have taken that one. Big Neil Rice, very experienced man, no relation funny enough of Arthur Rice, the famous player. Martin Richards didn't quite get hold of it, misfielded and out in fact because the bases were loaded Martin Richards couldn't get around to first base Welshman on one two and three and poor Martin Richards just couldn't get away so that's the third Welshman out Wales with one of them having to get home and uh, someone having to move off one base as David Richards hits it high again yes Freddie Price with the catch oh he's dropped it oh dear he's dropped it and that really was well he knows it was a catch you must take at international level really in premier level even Wales after the second round 35 for three Alan Harrison takes a good look around Jeff Lynch can't seem to get his foot in quite right Harrison strikes it well Freddie Price is the fielder but he won't stop that in fact how good is Fred's throw well I don't think it'll be quite good enough because Harrison is on his way sprinting very hard and as Paul Gardner makes four base, Harrison follows him and dashes past. Four runs, the first home run, in fact, of the innings to Alan Harrison. Lynch times ball, it's a very useful balls indeed. Hughes hits it straight back, it should be out, Lynch fumbles. In fact, Haynes is still at one base, and Hughes is out. Steve Haynes having stuck on one base, rightly or wrongly. But in fact, Ivor Hughes really thought from the moment he hit it or miss hit it that uh, Jeff Lynch would certainly get him out he fumbled but uh, Haynes never left one base so Hughes just could make no progress at all Go! 
Alan Bright receiving brother Bobby also played for Wales good shot by Alan no it's not it's straight to John Clark and this time it is an English catch Alan Bright punching that one high to the off seemed to hit it well and he's out for three to the catch by John Clark taken nicely above his head Collins hit in and struck out I think yes he was good ball from Lynch Collins had to go for it really almost tried to avoid being hit and was out struck out in fact Burley Paul Gardner receiving good ball first ball from Jeff Lynch now Lynch is just about getting into the groove now I think his fielders let him down a bit early on Gardner has a go at that punches it high is it a fielder there is it's out to the youngster Stephen Henney of Brexide and that's his first catch in international baseball. Well, Jeff Lynch can be termed as unlucky, really, so far in the innings. Not a lot of backup from his fielders. Fine action. Murphy hits it high. And flying away for two. On his way to three. And looking for four, Tony Murphy. The second four for Wales. Alan Harrison had the first. Tony Murphy, also from Newport, gets the second. Lynch to Harrison. Harrison seemed to miss hit it and given out bold, in fact. Didn't quite know what had happened, I don't think, Alan Harrison, but out for 13, so it was unlucky for him. But nevertheless, a good innings by Alan Harrison, the highest so far today. Wales 61 for 8. Steve Haynes, who certainly will never quit, hit in high and over Jeff Lynch's hand, straight to two base. Haynes will have to go hard, he won't make it. Bobby Davin gets her, and that was a strange uh, way of being out, in fact. Haynes is out based, but he hit it firmly. Jeff Lynch couldn't take the return catch. Freddie Price was there on two, and his return to Bobby Davin on one base was quick enough to get a determined Haynes out, but another good innings by the Welsh captain. Three men left, Tony Murphy hitting high. This could be a catch for John Halliday, the unlucky Halliday, really. He takes it, and the flying Richards is home. Tony Murphy out for 10. Wales, 61 for 10. So the last Welshman home is David Richards, who's at eight at the moment. He's got to get all the way. He hits it high. It could be a catch. It, oh, it's dropped, in fact. Richards travelling hard. He's got to go down by Neil P Rice, the backstop. In fact, Richards makes two runs. He's out. They're all out. 62 in the first Welsh innings and uh, England would certainly be looking for somewhere over 50 and uh, it's a while now since they've scored 100 in an innings Price towing the peg with his right foot John Smith gets steady and opens with a bad ball right over the head of Freddie Price John's had a little bit of back trouble lately but I'm sure he'll have got over that today Price a good ball, he took it well, he hit it well. Difficult bit of fielding for the new cap, Michael Fleming, and Price starts well with a two. Good start for him, a very experienced player in his 15th cap today. Neil Rice waiting, and taking a good ball. John Smith, the Van Rumney bowler. his feet right in with another good and out I would say too good to out it is he made no effort at all Neil Rice and really I just couldn't understand that at all two good straight down the middle just in the right place and Neil Rice I don't know if he's disgusted with himself or the referee but it was uh, well 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 a poor effort by him Tony Jenkins performing adequately again today Smith to Jervis, Jervis strikes and is clean bowled. Ivor Hughes, the Van Rumney colleague of John Smith, right on top of him there. Hughes, a very smart backstop who's been seen so many times. And that was another pretty useful piece of backstopping. Is the first of the two English new caps, 1918 indeed, years old, Carl Hughes of Brexide. Played over here two years ago with the Liverpool schools. 
first cap to him. This is John Smith, a receiver and a very good ball straight away. Very unnerving for the youngster. But Smith does this so well. Smith gets the first ball in as a good one very quickly. Hughes haven't quite got adjusted to the pace, no doubt. Now, will it be two goods? It's a good ball. Hughes flashes, misses, and Hughes was right on top of him. Another Hughes, Ivor Hughes, touching out Carl Hughes. So again, this Smith-Hughes partnership working. And the end, sadly, for young Carl Hughes. England first innings, five for three. Bobby Davin, a very good batsman through the years. 18th cap, with Ivor Hughes right on top of him. Davin strikes at it, gets nowhere in fact. The man was on one base, Henny, and there's nothing Bobby Davin can do. It was a, well, a bad shot, but a good ball. There are appeals at the moment that Bobby Davin still hasn't gone off. Bobby Davin, who was out and now is standing far too near the play, really. Gary Gall having received one good. John Smith has a good look at him. Hits it high. Is it a catch? A brilliant one by Alan Harrison! And it's Alan Bright, in fact, uh, out there from uh, Alexandra. What a brilliant diving catch and easily the best we've seen so far. Really, the odds were against him taking that as Gall hit high and strongly and Bright somersaulted there to take a catch towards his left. Smith to John Clark. That looked a good ball. Yes, it was. He didn't like it, but I thought it was neck high and not over his eyes as he was suggesting. Very strongly suggesting. It looked about neck height, in fact. Smith adjusting to the height of the batsman that come in pretty quickly. Clark swiped at a bad ball that time, and it was really a swipe, I think you could call it, and Ivor Hughes took it very easily. John Clark out for a duck. In fact, he had a duck on his debut in 1966 at Currens. Ivor Hughes with, again with that fine piece of taking. Matt. England six for six. Well, England in a lot of trouble as we get to the number ten batsman. John Smith, the man who's done it all, of course. Tenth batsman is the bowler, Jeff Lynch, from Anfield, who is no mean batsman at all. Oh, but he's gone, clean bowled, struck at the first good. If it was good, it was about eye height, I would have thought. Flashed at it. England up to the second round, 16 for seven. Well, a bit better news for England. Not too good, of course. Freddie Price, it's high. It could be a diving catch, it isn't. It's beaten Tony Murphy and could give the first home run for England, in fact. Freddie Price on his way to three. He'll make it for four. Freddie Price gets away. The man who made his highest score with 16 in 1979 and in 1966. But four runs there to Freddie Price, taking him to eight. England needing ten runs to avoid the follow-on. And John Holiday getting a few of those. One certainly. Will he go for two? No. The call from John Clark said, don't go. And it was a right one as the throw went to Paul Gardner. That's Alan Harrison on one base. 24 for 7 and John Halliday having made one base safely. Well, here's a change of bowling for Wales. Which I think, uh, though it's a low score, is justified because John Smith just lost his edge there in the last round. And this man, Paul Gardner, is a very experienced player indeed. Paul's father won nine caps. Halley from 1929 to 37. And this is Paul's fifth today. So into round five and Freddie Price receiving. Bad. Gardner not quite in his rhythm yet. Big man been out of action a bit lately with injury. Looks fit enough today. Price hitting a good ball and hitting it well stopped by Fleming. And the rebound, which is picked up by Murphy. But Correct. again, two more runs to Fred Price and this is a, a fine performance. England avoiding the follow on in fact with those two runs.
smallest man in the game, probably Joey Hyam. With Hughes, the backstop there, and taking it, and out goes Hyam, the first victim for Paul Gardner. Hyam tried to flick it on the leg side, it seemed, but Ivor Hughes was quick around there. He hasn't played with Paul Gardner too many times, but it was a nice take. Well, Wales have John Smith dropping off to base for the shot that Henny's played twice. He doesn't this time, though. He hits it well to the off. In fact, there wasn't a fielder there. He's caught them out. And good shot by Henny. The lad's moving quite well. He could even take four. He will take four. Good four runs for Steve Henny, which improves the England total considerably. Very good shot on the off. When Wales thought he was hit into leg. Now, Captain John Halliday keeps looking for the leg shot and then have a little glance on the off. That's the place he's going to hit it, I think, the off. He hasn't once played it on the leg. This is the off again. High, Martin Richards going back. No chance of a catch. And though Halliday isn't the fastest man around, he'll make three at least. How good is the Richards throw? Here it comes. Halliday on his way to four. No, the throw not quite good enough. Four runs to John Halliday. Four good runs for the England captain. John Smith to Fred Price. All clean bowled. Good ball. And out for 14. Too short of his highest ever in internationals, but a good innings by Freddie Price. England first innings, 51 for 9. Chasing Wales first innings total, 62. Now, here's the situation that John Smith loves. Skipper Halliday facing. Henny's on two base. There's no one else home. He's got to hit it. He does. Now, can Henny get home? Yes, he will do, because it's beaten the field. Murphy, the man, chasing through the crowd, but Halliday's on his way for another four. No, three runs. As Carla says, come on. Now, did he, did he continue to make progress? Yes, says referee Jenkins. Four runs to Halliday for the second time and 15 to him overall. Henny receiving and... Bold, well, he has a go, but it's no chance at all. Hughes, a left-handed throw, pitched over him to Alan Harrison at one base. And Steve Henney is out, 16 on his debut. The end of him, but a very good innings. Very good innings. And again, Ivor Hughes, the left-hander at backstop, catching it neatly and then pitching it over the runner. So it's John Halliday, the captain. Must hit a four, but he's gone for two fours. In fact, the last two strikes against Smith and Gardner. Can he do it again? Well, he's clean bowled. Good ball. And the end of John Halliday, a captain's innings of 15, which really makes up in some ways for the two catches he dropped. Wales with a lead of four on the first innings. Nothing in the game at all at the moment. All on the second innings. Linju's had a fine season, I'm told, in Liverpool. Harrison takes first ball. The field is there. John Jervis throw is wild, and Harrison has his run. run. Martin Richards, the younger of the two brothers, 20 years of age. Martin made three in last year's international. Oh, a court! Brilliant catch! Brilliant catch by John Jervis. That was a fine bit of fielding. Good shot by Richards off the middle of the bat. Jervis took it two hands of his head. Very good catch indeed. I was wondering whether it was worth having the close fielder, but it certainly was when you can catch balls like that. Mike Fleming needs to score badly. Mike Fleming on his debut. Rugby player at fullback for Kyra. Out for a duck in the first innings. Hits it high, could he be gone? John Clark comes for it, catches it, two ducks. A pair for Michael Fleming, a sad international for him. David Richards, product of the Glen Glanili School in Cardiff, he could be out, he knows he is. In fact, almost two men, a strange situation, Richards didn't bother in the end, perhaps he should have. It almost brought the downfall of Kevin Collins on two base. Collins still there, Jeff Lynch just not quite fielding cleanly, but the end of David Richards. Ivor Hughes, a very good batsman, backstop, hits it well this time, that's high, it's over, now bounces through the crowd, 
I'm sure if he quite got hold of it, it's perhaps a bit higher than he intended, but he's going to get four runs, Ivor Hughes. The fielder is a long, long way off, and that's very good runs for Ivor Hughes. Wales second innings, 31 for three, putting them 35 runs in front. Well, now Jeff Lynch must get amongst the Welsh this round. Another good round by Wales would uh, push them a little bit away. Lynch gets himself ready. Allison hits strongly. And in fact, he's beaten the field. He's quite quick, and I would back him for four here. Penny's got a good arm. Will he go for the fourth? Yes, he will. How good is the throw? Not a bad one, but Harrison would have been away to a fifth base probably as well if there'd been one. Four more good runs to Alan Harrison. Ivor Hughes again. Hitting hard, high. And that looks to be four because Hughes can motor certainly around the bases. Beautiful balance and speed of a footballer. And off he goes for another four. Very well hit runs. Very deceptive player, Ivor Hughes. Thought of mostly as a backstop, but a very strong batsman. Freddie Price then for the first time to Tony Murphy. Tony to the close field. Now that could be out. It's is it? Yes, it is. John Jervis, the fielder. No, given. I thought for one moment the referee said out. Yes, he has given out. England completely misjudged this Welsh accent, I suppose. And uh, the horrified Jeff Lynch, in fact, says, I'm very, very sorry. I thought you said not out. Completely misjudged to Jeff Lynch because the referee had clearly given out. And apologies from John Halliday as well. Wales 51 for four. John Smith, who's one run off the third place of Jackie Thompson all time now could he be out he's hit it high there's a fielder there and he's out caught by Joey Hyam and John Smith stays in fourth place in the all-time Welsh scorers punching it high to the off a little Joey Hyam was there and took that crunch very confidently John Smith out stays on 118 Steve Haynes two runs would be oh and he's hit it up two runs he wants for his hundred it's out caught by Bobby Davin so he doesn't make it either Bobby Davin stepping forward very simple catch at free base if any of them are simple and Steve Haynes is out and Freddie Price is starting a little bit of a collapse now Alan Bright having his best international for a few years Alan Bright has a chance for Neil Rice to get him, and he's out. A miss hit, it bounced on the pegs. Alan, Alan Bright just couldn't make it. Must have known in his heart he couldn't make it. Neil Rice's throw to Jeff Lynch, beat him to first base. So there goes another one. Wales 53 for seven. Well, Jeff Lynch shouting his instructions, and he's every reason to be a little bit angry with the field they put three or four catches down Gardner hitting high is that a catch it's beaten the field Clark was in Gardner will get four at least I will say that he may well get on to four he's not really that swift but is he going yes he is after 13 Paul Gardner that's his best innings for Wales in fact it equals his best innings in 1978 he also made 13 now can Ivor Hughes join the elite band of nine players who've made centuries for Wales bad, bad ball Lynch bowls with a, a very teasing ball that's uh, only just bad and uh, sometimes you'll have to go for it Hughes dead he's out and he doesn't make the century in international baseball and it's really a sad one for him as it was for Steve Haynes First mistake of the game, really, by Ivor Hughes. Kevin Collins, he's out bold, and Lynch is really so happy about that one. Neil Rice has performed well at backstop today. That was probably one of the easier ones for him. Collins going for the off shot and never making it. Paul Gardner on 13 at the moment. 
striking it well. In fact, he's got to go a long way to get Alan Harrison home. Can Harrison make it? I don't think he will. This could be out. It is two for Gardner. In fact, one for Gardner and all out. The second Welsh innings produced 71 runs, which means that England now needs 76 to win in the increase in rain at the moment. Here's the man who got through the first English batsman quite well in the first innings, John Smith. Now can he do it again? He's had some fine performances against England, but it's Freddie Price, the opener, and Fred had a good start with 14 in the first innings. This is the man John Smith will want. But it's an opening with a bad ball. Freddie Price had a very good game for England so far. One good. Teasing ball, almost went for it, and a good ball. One good. Freddie Price said, pardon, good. I'm deaf. I think he heard, though. Uh, it was a good ball. Smith to Price. Two and it's two goods and out. It was a very good ball, that one, and it was really unplayable. It's, I'm afraid, no good Fred saying that. It was uh, an even better ball than the first one. What a superb effort as Freddie Price just couldn't move. The ball was so close to him, the left-hander could do nothing at all. Two goods and out. <coughs> Smith to Rice, one good gone. That was a good one as well, but Rice put it away. Just stopped by... A dive in Martin Richards, two for Big Neil Rice, the man who made 18 in 1974 at Gaskeen and Cardiff. England second innings, two for one. John Jervis facing, it's high, there's a fielder, it's Martin oh, Richards oh. with a fine catch, what an excellent little fieldsman he is, and it's two ducks for John Jervis, the chairman of the English Baseball Association, not been a great day for him. Jervis hit it high to the off, Martin Richards moving to his right, caught it very nicely two-handed, he is really a fine outfielder. Smith to Hyam. Flicks it away, good shot, beats David Richards, Alan Bright covering as well. Will it be the right-hand throw of Richards or the left-hand? It's Richards, in fact, and two runs to Joey Hyam. Two runs! Good start for the electric supply baseballer, Carl Hughes. He's got to have a bit of nerve to face John Smith now, with 18 years of age, hits high. Will it be out? No, it seems to have beaten Paul Gardner, it has. He gets his first runs in international baseball, nearly trips up, but makes it to two base. And it's a very popular one with the English spectators and uh, the rest of the team, in fact. Two runs for young Carl Hughes. Ball just getting a bit wet for John Smith now. Not so easy to handle. Chance for the batsman. Henny swipes at that one indeed. High up. Funny sort of shot, but he's got it away for four. It looks as if it's away and into the brook at Rope Park, and it's four runs to this player, who really is having a wonderful debut for England, and putting his side right back in the game. This is the English first baseman, who failed to score, in fact, in the first innings. Been around for a long time, hits it high. Is it a chance for a Welsh catch? Tony Murphy misses it! England badly needed that life because Bobby Davin takes three runs for it. And that was a bad one for Wales. Not easy in the drizzle, but Tony Murphy couldn't quite get to that one. Davin punched Smith high. Murphy had to stoop away to his right. It was a difficult catch, but one that needs to be taken in internationals. Little Gary Gull, no, he didn't score in the first innings, but he is a very good batsman. And he's gone again, a pair for Gary Gall, his worst international by far. Clean ball by John Smith. That's a good man to go, and Ivor Hughes again, right on top of the bat. He stands so close, and uh, that's how you break your fingers as well. John Clark of St Margaret's failed to score in the first innings. Fails to score in the second. Clean ball. 
two in two balls bad game for John Clark pair for him well John Smith getting through them again England 16 for 4 still requiring 60 runs to win Jeff Lynch, the English bowler facing John Smith, the Welsh bowler, hit it well, very confidently, Mike Fleming can't stop it in the drizzle and making it hard on the fielder. Jeff Lynch sprinting hard, looking for three and three getting three runs. runs, important runs for England, those by Geoffrey Lynch. He's always been a useful batsman. Worked hard today. One wonders whether Wales will have a change of bowling shortly, but... John Smith far from finished yet. Bobby Davin cracks at it, misses it, and Smith strikes again. The Smith Hughes partnership. This man's had a fine game, missed absolutely nothing in the field, and unfortunately didn't quite make his hundred runs. But there's Bobby Davin. Must be miserable. Certainly didn't want to go then. John Halliday, formerly with Anfield Old Boys when he started his international career. Bad. Come on, Jono. Ball him out. Come on. Well, it's been a bit of trouble out. with the front of the box with Smith and Gardner, mostly. Not so much with Lynch and Price, the English bowlers. Now it's Halliday receiving from Smith, hey. trying to tuck it away. Never really had a chance. Hughes to Harrison. Oh, out by a good way, Halliday. Hughes with that beautiful left arm throw that pitches over and round the batsman as he runs in what's a hopeless task. He really has the throw to one base, off to a tee. England, 39 for six. Come on, Paul, we've got a strike now, come on. The drizzle continues, but the English innings still hold in. Neil Rice is out. That's a good one for England, for Wales. Neil Rice struck out. Sort of half-hearted shot, really, and Paul Gardner getting his first victim of the second innings. And I think that hurt him. Wales need another victim. Hughes puts it away. It's high, but it's all right. Martin Richards coming for it. And young Hughes will, I think, take a cheeky three. He does, in fact, well, well run indeed by the newcomer. Three more runs to Carl Hughes for the second time. Takes his total on to nine. England 45 for seven, still requiring 31 runs. Well, the best performance by England for three years, and the two new caps have done it, really. In this innings. There's Henny with his partner Hughes on free base, and there he is. The two newcomers proved a great success. Surely see more of them. Henny hits again very powerfully. What a good shot. That's beaten the field. David Richards coming for it. Can he get the throw home before Henny leaves three base? Will he chance it? Yes, the youngster will. And he makes it and deserves it as well. And all the applause he gets. Good baseball from Stephen Henny. Outstanding game for him. Now Wales have a change of bowling again. what must be the final fling for John Smith to come back for Paul Gardner. I think a wise move at this stage. John Smith to Jeff Lynch. Hits it high. That could be... No, I think it's going to fall away from Steve Haynes. It has. And Jeff Lynch gets away with not too clever a shot and limps his way on to two base. Well, England need all the luck they can get at this moment. Hughes tucks it away. This No, it's wide again of the Welsh field. And this is good runs again for England. And really confident runs by Hughes. The two Englishmen flying around the bases and Hughes making it to three again. Almost going to have a cheeky four, but settles for a very good three. Well, though England need only 20 to win, still this experienced Welsh side in with a chance. Henny hits high. That's a very good shot by Henny. Once again, 
that could be four David Richards flying after it into the crowd underneath us and he goes home for four no he doesn't he stays at three I think his captain was wrong there he should have made four and that was a wasted run perhaps by the caller England 59 for seven so 17 to get Jeff Lynch with an injured left ankle won't stop him hitting the ball Bad. one of the best finishes in the Wales England game for some years 17 to get four to get them Jeff Lynch nearly bowled one good in fact unplayable ball John Smith needs to fire the ball in I think very close to Lynch again Lynch hits it high confidently Alan Bright's there for the catch possibly it would be a great one he dropped it England needed that luck the luck that has hurt Bright's right foot two runs for Jeff Lynch could be the one that changes the game perhaps it wasn't easy with the drizzle coming down Ballon Bright has taken better catches than that in the past England 61 for 7 John Smith still changing them round What's one closer one further back and it's Joey Hyam Smith to Hyam tucks it away nice shot good shot indeed by Hyam two runs for that just a little touch but cleverly placed and a very useful two, two. and England now just needing 13 with four men left England 63 for seven still requiring 13 runs to win Carl Hughes to the pegs England have won on Welsh soil since 1970 at Baysleg when they met what was only a Gwent side but was in fact a full international Carl Hughes now young Hughes must stay for the extras if he can John Smith doesn't give away many extras Thanks, and that's one worried man at the moment John Smith but quite capable of putting four back for 12 Carl Hughes hits high he's got it away it's one run some thought that Paul Gardner should have caught that but very difficult to tell still a drizzle there and England just 11 now now here's the man who can really change it he's changed it every time he's been to the pegs Steve Henney Wales must know by now that Henny will look for a big shot. And he's hit him all round the park today. This is a vital one for Wales. Bad. John Smith having trouble with the ball. Not easy for the bowler in the wet. Steve Henney, the man they want. Extra! Another extra. Just 10 to get. Now, oh, very exciting finish indeed. Smith to Henney, 10 to get. Henney hits high again. He clears Gardner. He's got two. He might even get four. This is certainly the man of the match today. Steve Henney of England. He's on his way for four base. He gets four more fine runs. But six to get for England there's rejoicing in the English camp back on the bench and he goes round again for four 70. England 70 for seven only six runs required Lynch hits oh he gets away with it well they all counted that could be four for Jeff Lynch even with a bad ankle he'll run he'll really run it out and Lynch with his bad ankle as well will race home did he touch three base yes he did he touched four as well and just one to draw two to one win and Jeffrey Lynch has waited since 1979 for that and there can't be many more exciting finishes than this for an England victory but having seen John Smith for many years I know he'll still be there for the last run 
Smith to Hyam. Hyam pushes it away. It's the winning runs for Hyam. It's beaten the field. He needs to get to two base. Here he comes. He makes two. He'll keep going. The score is counted. Joey Hyam will make it four. Gives him four more runs in international baseball and a very famous English victory by four men holding. John Halliday, the English captain, many congratulations. Would you believe the first English win since 1938 at Cardiff? Not really, no. <laughs> Not the way things were going, but uh, let's pull through in the end. It was real good team effort, you know. So, Did you really think you were going to make it in the last innings? Yes. Truly, yes. I thought we, we had the batting uh, in depth, the strength in depth uh, in order to score 70-odd, so we weren't really truly worried about it. Who were the big successes for you, John, in the English side? Well, the young lads that came into the team, Carl Hughes, played exceptionally well in the second innings and Stephen Enney I think really took the man of the match for me anyway as, as a captain he was brilliant you know yeah so thought he was really outstanding John but a, a fine win your best memory in perhaps in baseball so far one of them yes <laughs> <laughs> yes certainly one of the best thank you very much and many congratulations thank John you. thanks very much England's first victory for 44 years in Cardiff 78 for 7 in the final innings they win by four men holding with the cup presented by Aubrey Jones of the Welsh Brewers to Captain John Halliday of England.